In this video, guys, we've got another top 10 list for you. Top 10 foolish things that traders do. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so top 10 foolish things that traders do, whether you're new, whether you're old, intermediate, doesn't matter. These are the biggest killers of traders, the biggest things that wipe people out, leave people on the strewn of the road while the market, on the strewn of the side of the road, should I say, while the market chugs on and people who aren't doing this are making some money. So number one, being a stubborn bull or bear. I'm going to broaden this out because I see this quite a lot. And honestly, there's a fine line. Actually, there's a fine line between a lot of these things. And we'll discuss the fine line when we come across it. But being a stubborn bull or bear, that means, hey, listen, we are in a bull market. The market's been going up for the past how many years, assuming we are. It's been going up, chugging up. We've got a trending uptrend chart on a daily, a weekly, a monthly. Everything is uptrending and you are bearish. Fine. There's nothing wrong with having a counter trend view. However, you need to be very specific about the signal you need to see before you start selling short. Otherwise, you will wipe out. And honestly, I have seen, I've studied some of the greatest traders in the world, greatest investors, read their books, studied their articles, all that kind of stuff. And very many of them have done this and they've learned the hard way. They've been bearish in a bullish environment. They say this is longer than we're seeing all the signs of this and they're selling short, getting stopped out, selling short, getting stopped out. I've seen hedge fund managers do it with individual stocks, with broad market. It happens to the best of them. So how do we avoid it? Listen, if you are bearish, fine. Wait for a specific signal, i.e. wait for someone first to commit, pull back, re-attempt to push at highs, fails, then rolls over. Something like that. I'm just making it off the top of my head here. But something that is saying, hey, you know what? I don't want to get involved in the bull market. I want to wait for the bear market. Now, the trouble with that is you might well be sitting on the sidelines for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Hey, we've had bull markets run on for a long, long time. Same with bear markets. They're a little bit different. We'll touch on those in a second. So being a stubborn bear, the first thing you do is just stop being stubborn because stubborn will make you lose money. Now, it's one thing to miss out on it because you don't believe the bull run. That's one thing. But to be selling short into it and losing money is another as far as I'm concerned. Ideally, you want to be able to flip your thinking and say, hey, while this is bullish, let me just trade what's on the screen screen here. Let me just buy these pullbacks. Let me just play the game that everyone is playing for now with strict risk management with the little bear guy on my shoulder saying, just be careful because at some point this thing could be turning. At least then you're putting something in the bank while you're waiting for potentially that big trade to come, the big bearish play that you've got all marked out and planned and where you're going to go with your good options, where you do selling short this, where you're going to head to, which stocks, how you're going to play it. That should all be prepared, but making some money while the market's running. Just quickly on the side, guys, a bear market, being a stubborn bull in a bear market, it's slightly different because generally speaking, you know, if you can invest you and you're risking just your capital investment, you're sticking 20 grand in a stock, whatever it may be, you can sit through quite a lot of drawdown that can go down to kind of half and still come back up in the next 10 years, or whatever it may be, you still make money. So it's slightly different when you're in a bear market. Uh, but what I mean from a trader's perspective, a lot of swing traders will a bear market will start. They'll see, hey, we're really deep now, breaking through supports. We're still crashing through. This one's going to hold. They'll buy, they get stopped out. They'll buy, they get stopped out. They buy, they see a little bit of bullish bullish uh, sentiment on the day. They buy a rally. Two days later, it undoes it all. They get stopped out. So it's just saying, hey, you know, it's, there's no problem having conviction. Conviction is fine, but sometimes you've got to look at the evidence in front of you and say, hey, listen, this is the most, this is brutal bear market. I don't need to be buying yet. Or if I'm going to be buying, let me buy very, very cautiously because regardless of what I think, this thing could go on way longer than, than, than possible. So just being careful about being stubborn. Now, if you're in a bull market and you're buying, by all means, be stubborn and stay bullish while the price is there. The point is to align yourself with the underlying trend. All right. I've spent a long time on one, but I think it's important because it's important, as I say, because I've seen a lot of big players do this and obviously a lot of retail guys as well so be careful that one all right number two risking all your account on one trade seeing this very very common people who usually have drawn down you know they've had a good run or not they've drawn down they feel like it's a bit of a swing the bat one last time kind of thing they risk the whole account on one trade get away with it and then maybe don't do it for a while they might kind of double up and then they sort of plod along then they 
feel like hair not getting away, get frustrated, get concerned, and then do it again, and all of a sudden you wipe out. You can see how that's gonna work, guys, but don't be tempted to get to start risking uh, large amounts of money on one trade, whether you're investing or or, uh, or trading. Because even if you're investing, guys, if things kind of pulls down aggressively, you haven't got any firepower to do anything else with. And number three, trading account that's too small. It's a fine line, this. We've talked about this in other videos, and if you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not, it's a good time to consider subscribing if you haven't yet already. We talked about where you have your small account, large account. Large account, if you're a beginner, not so much the best thing to do. Small account, again, it's kind of, you wanna find that happy medium where you've got some money. After you've gained experience, of course, talking about someone who's gained experience, understands the platform, understands strategies, got all that nailed down, and now is risking actual capital. If your account's too small, do you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna end up swinging for the fences on every single trade, and mathematically, you will wipe out, because you if you feel the best trader, and you're hitting them really, really well, and you're in the right conditions, and you just bang, 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 all of a sudden you're just gonna get whacked because you're taking too much risk because you want to take too much risk because your account size is so small. If you took maybe one or two percent risk, it's gonna be such a meaningless gain. You're like, why am I here? Why am I even bothering? So getting that kind of happy medium between too small and too large uh, as in a trading account size. Number four, trading what you think, not what you see. Again, we're in fine line territory, guys, because People always say this, and I was like, well, what do you mean, what I think I want to see? I'm seeing uh, you know, a market running up to resistance. I might want to sell this, or I might want to buy it. I, I, it's what I think, not what I see. So I kind of take these things with a pinch of salt. So it's a fine line. What it really means is look at your setups. Is your setup happening or not? So in other words, are you running from a chart? Is it is the price coming up to resistance level? Have we got any green flags that say this should be faded? It's run up, it's one daily ATR if we're day trading. It's a weekly day uh, ATR if we're swing trading. It's a previous high level. The market's not that good. All these kind of things might say that's a good fading opportunity. Or they might say, hey, this is not a good fading opportunity. The point is, look at your checklist for your strategy for your trade, not what you suddenly think on the day. Oh, well, I think it's good. I'm in a good mood. I think it's going to go through. I'm in a bad mood. I'm not going to take a trade. Yeah, that's what this is talking about. Not, as, not necessarily just looking and saying what you see. We know what we see, but it's how you see it in relation to the strategy you've already outlined. Hope that makes sense. Right, number five, following a trading guru blindly. Uh, this is something that many traders do. They'll follow somebody, they'll kind of look at strategy, follow system, and they realize that this guy doesn't have all the answers either. Now, what I'm not, I'm definitely not saying here, don't follow somebody. There are some really, really good guys out there who are doing good things. They have a premium service, you subscribe, they kind of show you trades or they coach you, whatever. I'm not saying that there are some good guys out there. There's some fools out there as well, but there are some good guys out there. So I'm not saying don't do it, but what I'm saying is, Use them as a your kind of vehicle for knowledge. Take bits that work for you as a person, your strategy and where you are with trading and the kind of capital you've got to risk. Utilize their knowledge, skill set, uh, you know, uh, accountability, whatever it may be. Take that, but recognize that they're just a trader like you. They may have been more experienced, they may have better funded, whatever it may be, they don't have all the answers. So look at them as that, as opposed to someone, hey, if I just shadow this guy and do every single thing he does, I'm gonna make money, because it doesn't work like that. You know, people have down months, people have down years, people have drawdowns, different style strategies. So use them by all means as a tool, but just be careful not to follow blindly. All right, where number six, repeating losing habits. Um, this is quite a common thing, guys, and, and old traders pretty much, I know, do this. We kind of get into a habit of, of making losing trades by because we're doing something we shouldn't be doing. Whatever that may be. I've done videos on this before talking about losing uh, losing habits and things that traders do to lose money. Or we're just repeating that behavior. We've got to identify one. I'm going to go too deep into it in this video. I've got other videos on that, but we need to identify the losing habit and then crack that nut, so to speak, so we can discard that and move on to the next. But repeating the losing habit or habits, multiple, is just a surefire way of losing money over time. It's just, you guarantee to lose money if you're repeating habits that are bad for your trading. Number seven, trading without strategy. It seems quite humorous to put it up here, but many people aren't. And many people, uh, maybe you're watching this now and you haven't got a strategy. I would implore you and urge you guys, honestly, to get some kind of strategy, even if it's very, very loose and you can build on it over time. Just something. So many traders out there are good doing this, 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 and this, and they don't really have a defined process for doing it. You know, if you're running a business, let's say you're running a car repair business, right? You're running, um, say you're running a Merc dealership, Mercedes dealership, you take your car into the dealership, uh, you need to get a new gearbox, for example, top of my head here. The 
garage is going to have a strategy in place for replacing that gearbox. We dog knows it's a gearbox fault. We put it up on the ramp, we undo this bolt, this bolt, that bolt. It's all laid out in the manual for them. The Mercedes sends it down there, they do it. They do it, they build a customer, they go, there's your new gearbox, it's gonna cost you a fortune, whatever it may be. But the point is, that it's systemized, there's a strategy there, and then they bolt other things on that they have, and this could relate to any business, and it should relate to a trading business as well. Too many people are trading, expecting to make some money out of this over the medium term, long term, and by the way, you can make money short term with luck, but medium term, long term, luck starts to diminish, it starts to become skill. Have a strategy, even if it's a very small strategy, a seed of a strategy, if you like, that you can build on and nurture and create into a decent trading business. Okay, number eight. Having the belief that trading is easy money goes without saying, guys, it's not easy money. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, you can make money just by gambling and trading, and that is pretty easy money. I can now go toss a coin. I could put my full account on the FTSE going up tomorrow, the DAX going up tomorrow, cable going up tomorrow, yen, whatever it may be. I might get lucky and think I'm a genius. It's not easy money. You know that it's a hard game, but if you stick at it and you kind of work through it as you do with anything worthwhile, um, you'll get to not even know get to where you really want to be, but you'll make progress. All right, number nine, being emotionally attached to one trade. Been there, done it. Uh, I'm sure you may have as well if you've been trading for a while. You get so attached to one trade that you're like, it's gotta work, it's gotta work, it's gotta work. Usually it means you're oversized into it. Usually it means you're adding too much you know, self-worth onto the trade. Normally after a drawdown, this is rather than a winning streak. So just watch out for that one. And the last one we've got here, guys, is thinking you're a genius in, in one market environment. I've seen this many times. Guys who are in bull markets, have a bull market strategy, think they've got it cracked, the market changes conditions, maybe doesn't necessarily go to a bear market, but perhaps goes a little bit quieter, volatility dries off, or we've gone from extreme volatility to low volatility, or low volatility to extreme, all the kind of different changes we get in market conditions. They've been trading one for a while, and a certain strategy has been working very, very well for them, and then the conditions change, the strategy doesn't work, but worse than that, that's fine because that's how traders, what we do, we kind of work and then the conditions change and we adapt. But worse than that is they keep trading the same thing, draw all the way down what they've made and they're in a horrible position. They've done all that good work and they've undone it. They don't have a kind of stop loss on account to say, hey, the strategy isn't working now. I need to the very least pull things back. At the very best, I need to implement a new strategy for the new market conditions. All right, guys, 10 for you there, 10 foolish things traders do if you've got 11 12 or however many more you have stick them in the comment section below so i can see them and so that anyone else watching this channel can too we can all learn we can all become better traders thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff much appreciated gentlemen and ladies goodbye